All right, everybody, what's going on? It is Tuesday, August 9th. Another negative day for the market. Actually, um, yesterday, because I just checked the daily treasury statement. By the way, for those of you who are interested to learn how to compile this daily, these daily flows by yourself, I have a video course on my website called Understanding the Daily Treasury Statement. I'm going to put the link right here in the description. It's 99 bucks. It's a video course. And it shows you how to go to that. It's a great resource. It's free. The government puts it out every day. It's literally the checkbook of the United States government. It has all the deposits and all the withdrawals, just like your own checkbook, if you keep a checkbook. Um, and when you learn how to kind of parse through that data and do very simple arithmetic, which I show you how to do on that video, you know, you could keep a running tally of these flows just like I do. So it's called Understanding the Daily Treasury Statement. It's 99 bucks. Anyway, checking the data, yesterday was a net drain of 6.4 billion. That was the first net drain so far this month in August. August, uh, you know, we've been pretty good. Um, so that was the first net drain. But we're still running like something like an 80 something billion deficit for the month, so that's good. Tomorrow, we will get, that's a Social Security payment day. All right, and those typically have been bullish for the markets, uh, stocks and risk assets, or maybe sometimes it happens the day after. So tomorrow uh, will be a, a good, strong, positive net fiscal flow day, and that should support the markets. And uh, we got CPI coming out. So here's the thing I'm going to tell you right now, because a couple of things. Number one. After four Fed rate hikes, and you know, I've been explaining to you guys that rate hikes uh, are effectively price hikes because the cost of credit is reflected in the cost of all goods and services. So when the central bank raises interest rates, it raises the general price level. You know, it costs more to, to borrow, to finance inventory, uh, to pay for things. It all flows through into the general price level. That's why, I mean, if you look at countries like, like Turkey and uh, Venezuela and, you know, Argentina and all these countries that keep raising interest rates because they think that is the um, remedy for fighting inflation, they actually raise the inflation rate every time they raise interest rates. So what is interesting is that we have had four rate hikes so far this year, some of them very large. I mean, these 75 basis point rate hikes, uh, I think you got to go back probably at least 30 years to see rate hikes of that magnitude. And we have not really seen a slowdown or a moderation in the inflation rate. That's because these rate hikes literally are jacking up the general price level. So and I believe CPI is tomorrow and of course if it's a high number we are going to get you know your your typical reflex headline trader reaction people are gonna sell just like they sold on that great we had a half a million new payrolls 528,000 new payrolls clear evidence that the economy is picking up some momentum now after two quarters of negative growth and the monetarists they sold all right, which is a joke. By the way, I did some stock buying for myself personally today. Uh, if we get a high CPI print, which I, I think that's entirely possible given the Fed rate hikes, you know, this is kind of like a vicious spiral. It's, it's the opposite of like Japan. They're keeping rates low and they've been cutting rates, trying to stimulate the Bank of Japan for 20 years, <laughs> has been trying to stoke inflation by cutting interest rates down to zero and then negative and they're just like, hey, we don't understand this. Inflation's not going up. We can't reach our 2% target because, you know, rates are effectively zero or negative. So you can't have 
sustained inflation or, or reach an inflation target. But with the Fed raising interest rates now, that's a vicious cycle in the other direction. Uh, and I, I, I would not be surprised to see another hot print. So let me finish my point or my, my thought was that if we get a sell-off tomorrow based on a hot print in the CPI, and I think it's tomorrow, I didn't check the calendar, but I think it's tomorrow, it could be Thursday, I don't know. Anyway, if we get a hot print and the market sells off, you want to buy into that decline, okay? I've been saying this over the past couple of days, buy this dip, buy this dip. We are in a fiscal environment now, you know, I repeat this every single day, we're seeing a re-expansion in the deficit, that is the reason for the big payroll number we got in July. Two quarters of negative growth, that's over. We will see positive growth in the third quarter and most likely we will see it again in the fourth quarter. The only thing we have to be, um, you know, uh, attentive to is the fact that in September, September 15th, we will get a quarterly corporate tax payment. That'll be a drain of about $100 billion. That That's a significant hit. And then we got to, you know, go through that whole recovery process again of that, that $100 billion. Um, So where was I? Yes, tomorrow is a Social Security payment day. I, oh, yeah, I was going to say that because I started to think that we might have the CPI print. But with, if that CPI print was not... Um, scheduled for release tomorrow I would say absolutely go in aggressively buying tomorrow I'm still saying that basically but I want you to be aware that a, a hot CPI print will trigger you know reflex selling on the part of the monetarists and people freaking out you know about the Fed gonna raise interest rates and it, it, you know so just be aware of that. You probably already are aware. Maybe you're going to go short on it. I don't know. Not me. I use that as a buying opportunity because I see conditions improving. We're going from uh, economic contraction to economic growth. I do not sell stocks and risk assets when we are in economic growth mode. If I think economic growth is going to peak out and start to go down, yes, I'll take some money off the table. But if I believe that we, the opposite is happening, that we're going from you know, a contraction back to economic growth, you don't want to sell on that, uh, in that environment. I mean, that's just the start of a renewed cycle up. So anyway, but you know, again, the monetarists are the ones who in the short term, they're driving the market by their perception you know, it's their own reality in their heads. It's, it's not reality in the sense of the fundamentals and how things uh, behave, you know, over time given conditions, but it's their reality in their head. A friend of mine sent me some very interesting information. I've been talking to you guys over the past couple of videos about how uh, fiscal is expanding also because of the rate hikes. Uh, you know, the, the rate increases are increasing the fiscal flows through that um, interest channel. And I track this uh, on the daily treasury statement. By the way, that's another thing you can track on the daily treasury statement if you get my course. I track this on the daily treasury statement, but also what's on the statement, which he... Uh, my friend uh, brought to my attention because I don't I don't look at this too often is T bills because I look at interest on Treasury securities and you know they're dated you know two year five year ten year twenty year thirty year T bills are you know thirty day bills sixty day bills ninety day bills they roll over much uh, the term are, are much shorter they roll over uh, more frequently uh, but Treasury bills don't have a coupon. They don't have an interest rate attached. The way they operate is that they're sold at a discount and the discount reflects the interest rate. So he showed me that already this year, we are up 25 billion when you calculate for that discount, the T-bill discount rate, uh, we're up 25 billion in additional interest 
that the government paid on bills compared to last year. $25 billion. So, like, here we are again, or here I am again, explaining to you guys and debunking this, you know, universally held view that rising interest rates is terrible, it's horrible, it's destructive, it's damaging to the economy. I mean, we're seeing some really significant increases in the fiscal flows based on these rate hikes. And that money, at least some of that money, gets spent. That gets spent in the form of higher consumption. It gets spent in the form of, uh, it gets invested. I mean, again, that's the same exact thing as the government sending out checks to people. It goes maybe to a different cohort in the economy, but, you know, that's a political thing. What I'm looking at all the time, as I tell you guys, is the level of the swimming pool. If that water level is going up, which it is, I'm not a seller. I am a buyer. If that water level was draining out, which it will be in mid-September, you know, I might want to prepare for that. Although, again, I think that's just like a temporary one-month phenomenon. You know, you don't want to get too cute with these things. By the way, Micron today, uh, stock got hit because uh, it had some uh, uh, guidance, negative guidance, and looking at lower rev revenues. I'll, I'll tell you a little anecdote, a little story. I maybe have told it uh, before. I'm pretty sure I have, but I think now's an appropriate time to retell this story. Back in 2003, when I was still a contributor at, at Fox, that was before Fox Business, that was Fox News. They had like we had like a business unit that we would do business shows on the weekends. I was on a panel with, at that time, uh, the former uh, CEO of General Electric, Jack Welch. Jack Welch, at that time, he was considered to be the greatest CEO of all time. I think he was re retired. He was no longer with GE, but he was just recently departed from GE, and he was doing his own thing. And he came on the show and um, he was very, very negative on the economy and so were the other panelists. If you remember 2001, 2002, 2003, the economy was in recession. You know, that was a, the, the lead up to that was the bursting of the dot-com bubble. But more importantly, the lead up to that was the Clinton, the second term of Bill Clinton, he uh, ran a big budget surplus, federal budget surplus, and that, that was the, the, you know, that was the setup for a big decline contraction in the economy. That budget surplus just sucked out, you know, a, a vast amount of income and savings from the private sector, from the economy. But Bush was now the new president, and he had um, enacted a fiscal stimulus at the time, sending out $300 checks to everybody. That was a big deal back then, all right? But I was on this show with Jack Welch, and Jack Welch was saying, things look terrible. The people I talk to in the corporate world, they're saying, you know, it's not going to get any better. I was the only dissenter on that panel. I said, I, I think we're going to see a rebound. We got fiscal stimulus. People are getting checks. And everyone's like, no, no, no. And uh, they were aghast that I could, you know, uh, uh, argue against the greatest CEO of all time, Jack Welch. Okay? Who are you, Mike Norman? What do you know? Well, guess what, folks? Later on that year in 2003, in the second half, the economy really started to take off. So I was right, but the, the moral of the story is when companies give guidance, all right, they're seeing what they're looking at is their existing order books, uh, feedback from customers, maybe supply chain, whatever. But that is what we call in economics coincident. That's what they see now. All right? And to a certain extent, they see that in the future for booked orders, let's say, you know, three months, six months down the road. But plans could change. 
Their customers' plans could change. Economic conditions may change in the interim, and that could trigger. So what I'm saying is like, it's very, very enticing to just listen to these, uh, you know, corporate execs and say, oh, well, okay, that's written in stone. Whatever they're saying, I better, you know, prepare for that. It is not written in stone. All right? They're seeing things more or less in the here and now, and they're no better than anybody else at predicting future conditions, and, and I'd submit that I'm better at it. I mean, it's what I do. And I look at the things that they're not looking at. Believe me, no CEO is you know going through the fiscal flows. So I can assure you of that. So anyway, that was the Micron thing today, and it just made me think about that uh, Fox News appearance with Jack Welch. And uh, so take that into consideration. Anyway, that's it for today. I'm going to put the link to the Daily Treasury Statement course. Uh, you know, that's a great resource. You really should know how to use it. See you tomorrow. Bye.